Welcome back to the Experience Bros Radio Show. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us for hours. Angel Tussie and Eric Kramer hanging out with you and hopefully helping you get your business right. Angel, you and I know that we started off our uh, our career together as trainers and consultants in the space of extreme customer service, and we realized that the employee is the first level of customer service, right? Sure. And I remember when we were training uh, a director, uh, a staff uh, director of a, of a staff call center, and this director, her, her strength was her weakness. She was really good at what she did, but she did it all. She did. And we tried to get her to release some of the things that she did and to... Um, I, I remember she says, I, I know what you're trying to get me to do. You're trying to get me to d- 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 delegate. And she she stuttered on getting it out. It was that freaky for her. Well, it was really freaky. And I think for many of us, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, you know, it's valid to be freaky. One, if you feel as if I delegate out all these experiences at work, will they need me? Will my role become irrelevant because I've delegated so much? That's a very real fear. You know, number two, nobody's going to do it the way that I do it. And so now am I going to be spending all my time correcting and fixing other people's mistakes? And when it was could have just been faster to do it myself, right? We've all kind of been there, right? Just faster to do it myself than, than giving it to somebody else. But the other side of the coin is you can get really frustrated. You can just because you can do everything doesn't mean you are the one that should be doing everything. You're going to get burned out. You're going to feel dissatisfied. You're going to probably be really cranky with your coworkers because they're constantly interrupting your flow because you're the only one that can answer a question or, you know, know how a certain piece of software or, you know, what, how to, I don't know, the passcode is for something. And so much of what we do is in our heads. Right. And so you're never going to be able to relax if it's all in your head and you're thinking about all the different things that have to get done. Uh, Jim uh, Schlexler, who is the CEO of Inc. CEO Project, wrote an article that says, rather than thinking of delegation as a binary issue, either you delegate or you don't, consider what it might look like if there were a sliding scale to delegations. He suggests there are actually five levels of delegation in order to lead well. Five levels. Five levels. Of delegation. And I think for those of us uh, who might be a little control freakish, that this is a nice entry into delegation. You can actually add a sixth level if if no delegation equals a level. Okay. Right. Okay. Sure. So level one, dele- delegation involves asking a subordinate to take the initial look and, and don't get hung up on the word subordinate, somebody else, somebody other than you, asking someone to take an initial look into an issue or a decision. The goal is for the employee to come to their manager and explain what they learned and what the potential decision options might be. The manager can then choose from those options and ultimately make the decision. Which means you could have made the decision. Right. You're very capable of making the decision, but you want to start to empower your team. Get some input. To make some decisions. Yep. And yes, to get to get some of their you know, their opinions as well and their input. I would imagine as that conversation unfolds, the subordinate, in this case, the employee, uh, brings back their observations. There's a discussion that ensues, and that trains the employee for what the CEO or manager is looking for. Yeah, let let me give you my parameters and how I would have gotten to a decision. So it's just having them look into issues or look into decisions that need to be made to train them up. It's, you know, they're not doing anything yet. They're just providing some feedback. Level two of the delegation takes a degree of autonomy a little bit further. Here is the employee researches the issue, makes a choice on the course of action. Now the manager still reserves the right to say yes or no on that action, but, and, and there's still an approval process in place, but it allows the employee to be the 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 button pusher. Right? Well, yeah. So here are option A, B, and C, and I think we should choose B because of these reasons. There you go. And so you're there whereas in level one, here here's option A, B, and C, and we discuss it. In in level two of delegation, they pick one of the options. And the manager still has the role of the mentor yes. who, who can come in and approve or disapprove and give conversation as to why. Level three 
is a more opt-out model versus an opt-in model, according to this scale, which means that the teammate makes the call on mm -hmm. what the course of action should be within a certain time frame. So, for instance, a case where a manager tells an employee to proceed with their plan unless they hear from me in the next 24 hours. If you haven't heard anything, you're clear to proceed. I think this presents an opportunity for ambiguity, which causes hesitation. Um, it, just my own personal thing, uh, you know, go ahead and do what I say you, you can do unless you hear from me. Now I'm in a holding pattern. Well, but only for 24 hours. Fair enough. Only you, for 24 you, you get hours. to set the time limit. So, um, so we're not really having even any discussion here. You didn't bring it to me. I didn't give you any feedback. You go, you make the decision. You tell me what you're going to do. And within 24 hours, if you don't hear from me, go ahead and do it, which means you're getting no input from from me, no guidance, no direction. You're making the choice. You did the research. You're making the decision. And by you know, 24 hours from now, you get to push the go button. Level four takes the degree of de delegation up another notch by making the decision retrospective. The manager asks the employee to tell them what they did after the action has already been taken. This is an evolution from the approval mode of delegation that has been up to this point informal. And good luck with that. I mean, it's good. No, it's, I'm not saying. So what, why is that good luck with that? Well, um, this is a very, this is an escalated, uh, element of delegation. And if you go ahead and do, do something and then come back and tell me later what you did mm -hmm. and I don't like it, pack your bags. Um, okay. Eric, you completely misunderstand the exercise. Did I? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Right. Because then if you're going to delegate something to somebody, yeah. you're not going to have any interaction with them or approval process built into it. And you've given them the carte blanche to go forward in this delegation and they do it differently than you would have done it. They make a mistake. This is a learning process. Okay. This All is right. a training procedure of how Good. we could do it different in the future. If you've got somebody that you're delegating a task to that you don't trust them to do it don't without delegate then the don't place. delegate it got to it. them. Okay. Take it down a notch. All right. And then level five. Pack your bag. You never know. Pack your bag. How you are lucky that that is not my perspective in the office. <laughs> level five. You've reached full delegation. Manager doesn't even want to know what the decision was or why or how. Doesn't matter. I delegated it. You did it. It's done. Pack your bags. We'll be back, one, one of us at least, tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in. This is the home of Positive Business Talk. The Experience Pros, revolutionizing the way people treat people in business. This is the Experience Pros.